It's Biden's fault. No, it's not. Okay, so let's go ahead, Mike. So, so okay, welcome to Into the Ring Live, folks. We we had a little impromptu, half half hearted intro there, but um, September twenty first, nineteen not nineteen twenty twenty one. Jesus Christ, I'm a century behind. <laughs> Nine twenty one twenty one. You guys know that Earth Wind and Fire song, September. It was on this day. Think of the lyrics. 21st yeah. day of September. <laughs> so you get to sing that song once a year and actually mean something. Anyways, today is Tuesday. We're back. There was nothing happening this past weekend. We didn't get together on Sunday to do a show. But we have a big weekend of boxing. A big Absolutely. weekend of boxing. And the, the best thing about it is, is that these fights are coming from the UK. So you can watch in the afternoon. You still go out at night. Title, title for today's show. Andre Ward confirmed Canelo hater. Absolutely. <laughs> it is what it is, man. 100% agree. Let's talk about that right now. Let's talk about, before we get into the fight that's going to happen this weekend, let's talk about what happened in this last week. What's transpired with Andre Ward, not necessarily turning up to train Caleb Plant, but more or less, you know, he was in the gym with him a day or two and gave him a few pointers or whatever. So, but in some, in some subsequent interviews he's given, you could see, I mean, people, the, the term today is hater. Um, I think it no. just derives from jealousy. Yep. He's just, dad used to say, Cello, that he's just, there, he's jealous of Canelo. He'll never, he'll never scratch the surface of the boxing star Canelo has become and yep. it eats him to the core. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it absolutely does. I think you nailed the nail right on the head, bro. Right there. I yep. mean, Go ahead and give me your take first on what you thought about the overall conversation with the interviewer and with Andre Ward. Well, Eric, you want to go first? Did you no, see you the interview? Okay, as it pertains to the interviewer. I didn't, see, interview, I, there... I didn't see the interview, so you go ahead. As it pertains to interviews, I don't even, 99% of these people out there that can call themselves boxing journalists, they're not even asking appropriate questions. They're just nut-hugging whoever is in front of them. That's all they do. They, they, they're softball questions. They're complimentary statements phrased as a question. You know, it's like Andre Ward, you know, you know, the, the, the boxing, you know, when you retire, you know, boxing really, really, really misses you. So and what is somebody like Andre Ward going to say to that? Well, no, not really. Yeah. So this guy's on my good side. So I'm going to say whatever, you know, bottom line is these guys are not objective journalists. They just, they're just nut huggers. I mean, that's the best way to put it. They're just brown noses, is what they used to call it. He's a brown noser, Lou. You hated him. Shut he's, up. A, he's a freaking <laughs> brown noser, that freaking half a fag. No, I'm serious. No, you're absolutely right, bro. Um, the issue I got with Andre Ward is this. For I got a reason, lot of issues with him. Well, yeah. I mean, I think you nailed it and kind of showed the legitimacy of anything that Andre Ward has to say here when you said, why don't you go ahead and say it again? His what? He's, his Andre of- Ward's biggest victory was a non-victory. Correct. Yeah. Because he didn't beat, he did not beat Kovalev. No, everybody yeah. knows it. He knows it. His promoters know it. His trainer knows it. Exactly. Bottom, b- bottom line. So but he was I- not. He was not a great fighter. Yes, he was the last American to win a, a Olympic gold medal, right? In a year that actually, I'll be honest with you, you got to understand there were two countries that year that I believe, if I'm, I'm correct, Cuba didn't participate in that Olympic. Russia didn't compete. And Russia didn't compete. Ru- Russia was disbanded, so, so they had to they had to compete in in neighboring countries, and you know, yeah. Bottom line, they, they weren't a full. I mean, look, at he still accomplished a gold medal. You can't take that away from whatever. He was a champion. He's supposedly undefeated world champion in what? Two weight divisions. He, he won the title at 168, 175. Um, but he's a guy. He's a guy that when he left boxing, boxing collectively breathed a sigh of relief. Nobody turned up to watch Andre Ward. No. He was he was atrocious. He couldn't see his he, own hometown. No, he couldn't. I remember years ago, me and you were getting Groupon. This is back when Groupon in its heyday, when it was just kind of like a new, a new uh, uh, advertising, um, whatever you want to call it, platform to, to get things sold. They were sending, and, and we're six hours away from Oakland, and they were sending us Groupon things to our spam email, two for one tickets to see Andre Ward fight at the Oracle in Oakland, California. It's like, why would I drive six hours to see that scrub? I wouldn't drive six minutes to see that scrub. <laughs> we saw him fight one time live in Ontario, right? When he fought the Delvin Rodriguez kid, right? Yes. Yes. And, and I don't, I don't think he was even the, the main event, but it, it, the, the, the arena was two thirds empty, which is to say it was only one third full. And probably half those one third were comps. He just was not an exciting fighter. He, he, he doesn't fool anybody with the son of God persona. 
he he hasn't fooled anybody that's been really paying attention. And as it pertains to Canelo, he obviously has deep seated jealousy of Canelo. On top of that, I think he's he's trying to stay relevant and inject himself into some sort of a controversy so that he he he's trying to distract Canelo. Yeah, yeah, and and the guy the guy's a joke as far as I'm concerned. Well, he's gonna. Here's the thing: is Andre's gonna win either way because if Caleb Plant is successful in his outing against Canelo, believe me, Andre Ward's gonna have no issue taking credit, saying, "Yeah, I was that one piece of the puzzle that they needed because I was such a great fighter." And it just kind of shows you. Well, like, he'll say he'll say something more subtle, something yeah. along the lines but where you know, know I saw some with. I saw some holes and I saw some things that could exploit, and Caleb exploded them perfectly. Blah 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 blah. But on the other end, yeah. if Canelo goes in there and does what I feel he's gonna do, and just ultimately just beats Caleb to a pulp and knocks his kid out. Um, Andre Ward's going to abandon him like a guy, like a, like a, like a walk on in the NFL gets abandoned by the NFL team. As soon as he gets hurt, just going to get cast aside. They'll take no responsibility for it. They'll say, Hey, well, I guess, you know, you know, he just wasn't ready. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. Or he didn't follow the game plan or whatever. Or yeah. He'll absolve himself of, of, of any responsibility, but he'll be more than happy to take credit. Even if Caleb, gives Canelo a good fight, which I think he can give Canelo a good fight for. I, I, I did initially think about six rounds. Now I'm thinking about half that because now you've got Canelo's goat. You, you pissed him off. Yeah. Um, let's talk about that a little bit. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about what happened at the press conference today. And I, the press conference is here in LA, right? Yes. Here in Los Angeles, right? It looked hot as hell out there. My guys were sweating. It's a hundred degrees here in LA. I don't know where you guys are. Anybody's watching from, but it's, it's really hot. <laughs> until all of a sudden summer came back with a vengeance yeah i got i got a i went out this morning and i was like jesus christ i can't believe how goddamn hot it is right now you know yeah it was really hot i'll early. tell you what after, after watching that press conference though um caleb plant screwed up yeah he did bad i'm telling you right now i'm agreeing I'm, I'm, I'm not i mean he really royally screwed the pooch on this one you know why because it's one thing to to get in the in the ring with you know Canelo and and uh, you know just to box him, but it's a whole nother thing to get in a ring with a pissed off Canelo. Well, the so now, 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 now it's gonna now it's gonna instead of a boxing match, to, it's gonna be a fight now. Somebody now it's gonna be a fight. Actually, hurt you, Canelo could could have easily just wiped this guy out in in nine rounds like it's like it's nothing anyway. Well, but he now said. He's, yeah, he now said he said he knocks him out him. in eight rounds or less. He said eight rounds yeah. or less. And when Can when Caleb was talking, remember Canelo? He's like, run, 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 run. Because yep. he's basically saying Caleb's gonna run, and and he will. Caleb's not gonna stand there and trade with Canelo. He's gonna he's gonna whether you call it running or you know just boxing, whatever. It's gonna probably at times resemble running from a you know, I don't know, a a, a mountain lion, you know. Yeah. Well, this is just, I, I, don't, I don't have no sound on it or anything like this, so I don't think we're going to get a violation, but this is just a quick glimpse of what happened at the press conference today between the two fighters. Yeah. What I don't like, though, I, I got to be honest, but I, what, it's it's kind of uncharacteristic. I don't, I, don't, I don't like that Caleb took, tried to take a cheap shot. Watch what happens here. Yeah. Well, no, he got he shoved he, first, though. He got shoved first. Yeah, he gets shoved. but He I got mean, shoved pretty hard, though. He's yeah. lucky he, because he. So now he's coming here like he's everything. But he okay. said something about his mom. No, 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 no. He he didn't, guys. Listen, he, he, he didn't say nothing about. He him. didn't say nothing about his mom. He said right. "motherfucker." Excuse said? my language. No, but but Canelo's, you know, ESL. He he did look at. He didn't understand. Caleb Caleb Plant. Yes, he's gotten under our skin because, and it has nothing to do with him as a person. It has everything to do with him as a fighter. He's fought nobody in his last few fights. He's fought. He fought the guy who the guy the Planet Fitness guy Mike Lee. He fought Caleb Churax and struggled with him for twelve rounds. Yeah. So it's like the proofs in the pudding. I want to root for the guy. I, I want to root for the, the, the you know, the, the boy from Nashville, Tennessee, but his persona, it doesn't match his ring, uh, no. I, his ring resume. It just doesn't. Well, not only that, bro, what he claims to be and where he came from, the words that he used. Now, of course, Canelo has a language barrier being the fact that he's his predominant language is Spanish. But some of the things that Caleb Plant said today, you know, some really, really explicit, you know. Yeah. Um, but he called him a cheater. He called, he called I'm, him I'm a talking about like the, him saying like suck my, you know, and all this kind of stuff and what he said to no so's and stuff. And he can say whatever he wants. The bottom line is he's pulling that Canelo that fought Triple G in the second fight when Abel Sanchez challenged a Canelo got it under his skin and Canelo went in there and fought. 
Triple G. He didn't make it a tactical fight. He went there and fought him, and it ultimately ended up winning the fight. Same situation is going to happen here, but I think it's going to be a little bit different because I don't compare a guy like Caleb Plant to a guy like Triple G. Triple G's a much more accomplished fighter. The problem Caleb Plant is running into right now, he thinks that he's ready. He's had this hard life to prepare him for this moment, but he's never done the homework, meaning fight the right opponents to really be prepared for, for someone like Canelo, like yeah. Canelo he, Alvarez. He still true. makes he still makes a lot of amateur type mistakes. He's very hittable, very yeah. hittable. He's not yeah. as fast as they think he is and stuff. Um, go back and watch his fight against Caleb Truax. Truax was that guy is slower than Mal- molasses, and that guy was hitting him with straight right hands all night. I was watching this, and I was like, oh my god. You better learn how to, you know. Let me ask you guys a question. Do you, do you, and I'm not saying that they would get together and contrive something like this, but do you think Canelo at this stage in his career, no, because remember he had a little bit of, he had a little bit of a a beef with Billy, Billy Joe Saunders too. Am I breaking up? No. Yeah. Uh, You know, he, he had that. Eric looked like he's frozen. (laughs) He froze. Eric. Look at that look, look at that look, dude. That's all. I gotta get a picture of that, dude. Dude, that's going on. His, that's going it looks on like his, a mug shot. I don't know. It looks like his mug shot. I'm gonna lose it, man. Damn it. I hate this. Ah, God, we lost it. Damn it. I have a picture. Hey, hey, hey. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I we got, had a I great got, mug I, shot of you. Like we had a show. great picture, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, I was doing some, uh, some look, looking for the whole Caleb plant and everything. And here's uh, here's one of the greatest. I can't see. It's it's a uh, it's a uh, Mike Tyson saying. Oh yeah, I saw that. But oh Mike yeah, Tyson said it. He's all oh, he's gonna get the shit beat out of him, dear. Yeah. Shit. No, but <laughs> Mike, but go back and finish what you were saying, Mike. <laughs> no, um. I said, I think Canelo, do you think at this stage in his career, he understands sometimes? Because look, boxing's in the, look, we love boxing. We're always going to tune into the fights. We don't care what the ratings turn up on Monday. Yeah. Boxing is in a bit of a state of, you know, the ratings, the last few pay per views have been pretty much a disappointment. The, the, the Manny Pacquiao one was a huge disappointment. They're saying it only cracked like 350,000 buys when if it, if it would have been against Spence, they were projecting it to be maybe close to a million. Do you think that he really, he, at this point, he's like, "Listen, I, I, I'll get into this now. I, I, I'll, I'll get into the, the, the trash talk back and forth, whatever, because he understands that now it's affecting his bottom line. Listen, I'm getting a guaranteed. I'm not getting the same guarantee I was getting with the zone. He's not getting that guaranteed 35 million. <clears throat> but if he's getting 15, 20 million guaranteed, he does something like this, right? Shoves, shoves Caleb like this and makes the fight. I mean, listen, it's popping up on ESPN, Fox Sports." Yep. people's instagrams facebooks because people love uh, right away the casual boxing fan goes oh shit i gotta, I gotta watch, watch this fight. fight who's this guy man this guy pissed off canelo man canelo's gonna kill this white boy blah blah blah, blah. you know so <laughs> it, it might it's working because canelo used to have some pretty thick skin right some yeah, pretty thick skin yeah but i, I tell you t- what's happening with canelo bro i could give you i could sum it up real quick canelo he feels this- disrespected i think well, he's been disrespected and he's felt this flack for so long People with thick skin, like myself, I have thick skin. You know what I'm saying? But you get to your threshold. And Canelo's yeah. been at his threshold because he looks at these guys that have done nothing to try to elevate themselves in the in the eyes of boxing, where Canelo has. And he's like, how dare you question yeah. me or do this or this? So his goat is up. He's done with this bullshit. Yeah, yeah. He's done with the Caleb Plants. He's done with the Billy Joe Saunders. He's probably not going to fight Triple G, but if he does, you know, he's going to make an example out of him. He's looking for bigger challenges. Well, he's mem- remember you know? after the Billy, Billy Joe Saunders fight, he said the same thing to Demetrius Andre. Who are you? Yeah, he's People like, don't want to watch you fight. The only reason why he's yeah. fighting Caleb Plant, to be honest with you, is because Caleb Plant has that fourth belt. That's yep. it. WBO all time. That's it. If it was, if, if that belt was on Caleb Truax, Canelo would be fighting Caleb Truax. He wants to be undisputed at 168. Well, well that's the problem. What you, hey, that, so what do you think? What do you think? Right so Canelo's, uh, after, after he whoops, because he's going to, after he whoops plant, what do you think his next move is? Does he gonna, go up a little? Well, let's Does, stick on the plant situation. And then we could talk into that because I, me and Mike kind of have an idea on that one right there where he might venture into. But right now, I think Canelo understands that unifying this 168 pound to be the only the seventh person in history to ever unify all four titles 
It's a major accomplishment. Yeah. And, the fir- and, the, and the first Mexican-American to ever do it. Exactly. And he's mentioned it mm-hmm. time and time again. Or Mexican. What I say, Mexican-American? Yeah. Sorry, no disrespect. The first Mexican or even a fighter of Latin descent, South American, Central American, first one. He's, he said he's doing this for his fans and he's doing this for his country. You know what I'm saying? His legacy is already pretty much solid. You know what I'm saying? As far as what he's done. So this Canelo's not perfect. looking to look back. But for some reason, you have so many fighters out there you know, that are still living in the past. And they think that they've earned the right. You got the Charlos, you got Demetrius Andre. Now you got Caleb Plant, you got Gennady Golovkin. These are the guys that, you know, like I said, I mean, eventually they get woken up, you know, Demetrius Andre, he's chosen his own path. But right now, Canelo's only focus on, I think, not only beating, um, I'm sorry, Caleb Plant, but making an example out of him that this isn't Trilla. This isn't, you know, Jake Paul versus some guy who sells, you know, Reeboks on some YouTube channel. This is a real fight. And in a real fight and in a real world where you use harsh words, there's real consequences. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I got to say, I did not. How do I say this? I did not like Canelo shoving plant only because if that stage would have been two feet shorter, because he yeah. shoved plant. If you go back and watch it at different angles, he shoved him hard and it's a, I don't understand how Plant didn't fall because he was standing, his feet were squared up. Yeah. Like in boxing, he would be like the, the prototypical what not to do. And when he went back, all his momentum, it took all that stage to keep him from. If he would have fallen off that stage, he could have got seriously hurt. And granted, he's a he's a, he's 29 years old. He's an athlete. He would have bounced back. But that would have seriously put this fight in jeopardy. Well, yeah. I mean, even the cut that he got in his eye, you know what I'm saying? When Plant came in and tried to throw that sucker punch and Canelo just saw it coming a mile away, yeah. you know, Rolled with it, came back around and smacked him. I thought, dude, if that's it, if that's an intro to what we're gonna see, <laughs> Caleb, you know, you got some more work to do in the gym. But yep, I agree with you. But I think, like I said, because Canelo took what Caleb said the wrong way because of his his broken English, he thought Caleb was insulting his mother. That's what I think instantly caused him to react yeah. the way he he did, yeah. which is very characteristic of Canelo. But it, this is this is building up. You know what I'm saying? The Andre Ward thing just added fuel to the fire. Okay, you know, what Plant's been saying since day one, kind of was not the type of person to go into a fight and start, you know, doing trash bullshit. talking. Yeah. He gets a little, he gets a little narcissistic, you know, whatever, like this, but, but he doesn't trash talk. Caleb took it to that level. So anything that's done from this point on, he has nobody to blame but himself, Plant, including the incident today, because he instituted, he started all this. He okay, AJ, I'm going to ask you, it. I'm going to ask you a question here. Caleb Plant says, picks up the phone, calls AJ Mendoza and says, AJ, I want you to come and join my camp for this fight. I Fucking need help. What, 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 what could you tell Caleb Plant t- to do to beat Canelo Alvarez? I'll tell you exactly what, what would you tell him how to, how to, how to beat Canelo Alvarez? Run. I, t- I tell you how you beat Canelo Alvarez. You go into the fight not thinking that you're fighting Canelo Alvarez. You go into the fight thinking that you're fighting a guy that's on equal ground and you show him that you're a tougher Mexican than he is, even though you're not Mexican. You don't let Canelo use those roughhouse tactics. You watch where Canelo, all you have to do is watch Canelo's lower body. Even though it looks like it's stationary, he swivels his hips, and you're going to know exactly where he's coming. Roll with those punches and come back. Let Canelo use his power to his disadvantage. Let him walk into something a la, you know, um, Manny Pacquiao some years ago against Marquez. Use your height, but don't get hyped and jab happy. Callum Smith tried to do that, and that didn't work for very long because once Canelo goes to the body, that shit's all out so, the window. So, so you think Caleb needs to fight? He needs to he, he's a fight. He, he needs he to stand and fight. He needs to fight. He cannot allow Canelo to win those vicious exchanges, whether his back's on the rope or Canelo's back's on the rope. He's got to start. He's got to finish strong. Okay. You know? All right. I mean, I th- I, like, I, I, I thought going into this fight, I, I, I'm not, I, I always – Thought Canelo was going to win this fight decisively. I thought it might be competitive for th- for six rounds, and then I think he pulls away and stops him. Like Canelo called it today, he said less than eight rounds. Eight rounds, less I'm going to knock him out. It could be round seven, could be round eight, but I think because of the added um, aggression, and Canelo's not a dumb fighter where he's just going to be reckless because he's angry at the guy. Because look at that was the heat of the moment. He understands when it's time to go into a fight, he's going to be in his dressing room. He's going to be warming up, warming up, loosening up, getting ready for the fight, playing the fight out in his head. He'll be calm. He'll be aggressive, but he'll be he'll be controlled aggression. I so, also- I, but I don't think it even goes eight. I think he gets Caleb out of there before six. I think I, I really do. 
I I also think that you know with the added aggression, um, it's it's like it's like a soldier um, on the battlefield, and you got your finger on the trigger. That trigger is going to be able to be squeezed a lot quicker and a lot faster. Um, and so that's how I see Canelo. He's going to be primed and ready at the at the very first mistake. So his yeah. first punch, he might just throw a big straight right hand well, against the southpaw and try I'm to take him out. It, 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 it could end early. Yeah, it could. Um, it, it really could. I mean, because he's he's I honestly think the aggression factor is going to work so well for for Canelo. You think so? Because he knows how to control it. He's, well, he knows, how, he knows how to control talk, it. Yeah. But it's like it's like that piss. It's it's like a piston. It's ready, willing, and re- just it's it's a hair trigger. And the moment he sees that well, opening, Canelo, even Canelo's just the one of the best, opening, best yeah. it's going to be there. Canelo's yeah. one of the best at playing what's called boxing chess. He showed it against Billy Joe Saunders. Billy Joe Saunders started having a little bit of success. What Canelo does is he leads them into this false, false sense, sense of security. Sense of, of secure, yeah. Where Billy Joe started to get a little bit more cute, started to, you know, extend a little farther, a little farther, started to dip a little deeper. But he knew exactly what he was going to do. He saw where Billy Joe go back, a, go back a few weeks ago when Gabe Rosado fought against Beck the Bully. Everybody was making such a big deal. I saw it right away before Rosado even did. I said, This guy's going to walk right. I saw how Rosado was posturing himself. I knew he was just waiting for that moment that that guy was going to come in. He was going to unleash. Same situation. Now, getting back to what we were talking about with, plant there's another thing that plant could do be successful that nobody does against canelo and that is throw your punches in combinations billy joe tried it in the later rounds prior to him getting stopped and had some bit of success doubling up on the jab coming back with the hook and an uppercut that was can't, success. can't throw one punch at a time you can't let canelo get set you can't get canelo get set to the point because i'll tell you what, once he gets set the punches that are coming at you He's not thinking about, he's thinking about the next set of punches after that, that are going to come at you. So you need to keep him guessing and backing up. You got to disrupt his timing. You can't let, that's Perfect. what I think. That's what I, I, I think. See, I think I once see cont- Canelo backing up in this fight. No, no, I don't, I don't either. I don't either. He, I don't think he takes a step backwards. forward the entire time. Yeah. Look, well, there's another issue too, is I know Canelo made a thing, a reference about Caleb and his, uh, about running. Go back and look at Caleb's fight against uh, Truax and uh, a couple other guys. He runs out of gas. People have talked about Canelo's gassing out the later on. Caleb Plant is yeah. Ca- out Caleb runs fights. out of gas. He runs out of gas, and that's a, that's not a good quality. Now, let's talk about something else: the physical stature of how they look today. Um, I'll let you go ahead and start today, Mike. What do you think about them and how they looked at the press uh, conference? Well, you know, the height's not going to bother Canelo. I mean, he's fought guys that tall. I mean, bigger. Yeah, bigger. Yeah, yeah. Callum, Caleb, Smith. Callum Smith was what six three. Yeah. Rock Rocky Fielding was six two six three, so th- he's not going to have a problem finding Caleb. Caleb, I saw today before, prior to the press conference. I don't know if you guys saw they did the um, the photo shoot earlier in the day, and they were both. This is when they were both calm, and you know they were both you know shirtless and um, just in their trunks. To me, man. He, yeah, he looked a little bit soft, but 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 he's you know he physically he's a big guy. He's going to be the heavier guy on on the night. Um, I, I not think not going to bode well for him though. Quite honestly, I, because I think that he will gas out quicker and faster. Yeah. Um, well, his fighting yeah, style is set up to do that because he well. moves, he pops, he moves, he pops, he moves. He tries to be cute. He calls himself. Well, men- well mentally, he's going to get exhausted from 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 trying to avoid, you know, a left hook or a straight right from Canelo. So it's going to mentally exhaust him. That's just going to add to the going to lose three rounds of exhaustion and energy just walking to the ring. Just that ring walk, Mike, you know, you've spoken to a lot of professional fighters, just that ring entrance in the crowd and, and, and everything that's that's involved in it, it zaps your energy. Oh, and, it, and it's going to be a very pro Canelo crowd, even though even though he's the what's considered the visiting fighter coming from Guadalajara up to Caleb, Caleb's a true blue American boy from Nashville. But yeah, he's, it's going to be probably eight to one Canelo fans in that oh, arena, yeah. you know? Absolutely. But um, hey, is there any way we could get tickets to that fight? Yeah, Not, you can get tickets. They're going to go on sale pretty soon. Wh- where's the fight? Is it in El Paso or? No, it's in Vegas. In Vegas. The T-Mobile Arena. Shit, I didn't know that. They're Where's not going to sell it out. It's going to, they'll come close towards fight night because they, they the hotels start, the hotels buy a blocks of tickets and start giving them to their, their high rollers and their whales. But um, you could but, probably go on and get tickets right now. Probably cheapest tickets, probably 50, 60 bucks. But and the T-Mobile Arena is a pretty decent sized arena. Um, Big, it's 20,000 20, seat, 21,000. It's the biggest yeah. arena in Vegas. That's where I saw Iron Maiden with my son. But um, 
real quick, um, back on the Canelo Caleb Pipe before we move on to the next, we got a lot to talk about today. Um, I don't look at it as a way that it's a guarantee for Canelo. This is boxing. We know anything could happen in boxing. You know what I'm saying? It could be a punch. I could have a bad night. Or maybe Caleb Plant does know something that the rest of us don't know. But he's going to have to do everything to the book, everything scripted, everything perfect. And the first thing he should do is distance himself from the defensive-minded Andre Ward. Because that defensive thinking and the way Andre threw punches, the way that he left him out to left himself out to dry, go back and watch the first Kobolov fight if you think I'm joking. Watch how easily Kobolov was able to hit Andre with these anvil slow as molasses anvil punches. I'm telling you, if Caleb Plant sticks to what his trainer tells him, which that's another thing is I don't know about the experience of his trainer. I don't know much about the guy, but he's got a big hurdle to, to get over in Canelo Alvarez. And unfortunately he's not making any friends with his mouth. Once again, I'm gonna say this isn't Trilla. This isn't about, you know, mouthing off. Some of the things he said, he went above and beyond. I understood his goat was up. He's a little pissed off because Canelo pushed him. But what do you expect when you say things? What do you expect when you run your mouth? Eventually, you're going to get there, and eventually, you're going to say the wrong thing, and the person's going to react. We live in a world right now where people think that they can say whatever they want, and there's no consequences. Well, yeah. There are consequences, and Caleb Plant's going to find a hard lesson. But let's go ahead and move on. But um, right. you want to you want to get predictions on this, or you want to wait till next show? Well, okay. I, let's just talk about one more thing as, as it regards to this, and, and that's the, that's what, what Caleb Plant through the through the entire week after Oscar Valdez tested positive for whatever the banned substance was. I'm not even really sure what it was, but you know, he went out so far as to saying everybody in Canelo's camp, the Reynosos, they're cheaters. He said, called him a cheater. Now, granted Canelo did get popped for the clenbuterol, right? It was supposedly the tainted meat. I don't believe that. I didn't believe it then. I'm not going to be a hypocrite and say, I believe it now. I believe Canelo got popped. Okay. He got suspended for six months, whatever, even though it was retroactive, whatever, but Caleb's not wrong in saying that, but at this point, I don't think Canelo's a dirty. Uh, I think he's a clean fighter. I don't think he's doing anything. Well, his argument went nowhere, bro, because he was blaming that Oscar Valdez didn't get a punishment. But no, Canelo did get punished. He served his time. He did the time, and he's back, and he gets tested on a regular basis. Shit happens. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it happens yeah. in boxing. Um, okay, I'm but sorry. I think I think Caleb Plant's bigger issue is where he's taking so much time out of his day to bash Canelo over social media. Canelo's having his workouts. Then Canelo goes on this three hour thing that he does every day where he sits in complete silence and allows all the things that he learned and all the hard work that he did to absorb and evolve within his body. Like Caleb's out here running his mouth on social media, two yep. totally different fighters. You talk about dedication. It yeah. starts from the top, but you don't forget your values. Caleb forgot his values a long time ago. So whatever he was taught by his daddy back in Tennessee, he forgot because I'm sure his dad would have had a strong, a stern word to say to him with some of the yeah. language that he used today. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what? Hold on one second. So I, I did a quick search and uh, we can get um, tickets. It's at the MGM Grand. It's not at uh, T-Mobile or maybe. Oh, it's at the is. MGM? Well, they're oh. the MGM. And it's uh, the lowest price ticket up in the nosebleeds is $776 per ticket. Oh, Jesus. Where, where are you on? StubHub? No, I'm on... Uh, you're not an MGM box office because th th no, no, those no, are no, people no. that are buying and reselling tickets. Vegas tickets, Vegas tickets. Yeah, hey, that's Mike, it. They Mike, buy them and resell. Just call Neil. I know he knows some down and no, out. Dude, I, dude, dude, dude. It's, hey, it's a TG. It's a TGB promotion. Johnny could probably get us some. Hey, let, 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 let's do it this way. Or Eric, let's make right? let's make a plea to the Alvarez team. Uh, no, no, no. Hey, I don't you know what? Plea. Honestly, I want to watch it at home because. I really don't want to get my, I don't want to get any of Caleb's blood on me and stuff because believe me, it's going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> it's going to be spraying right. everywhere. Let's move on to the fight. Well, okay. You want to, <laughs> I know AJ, you said earlier, you wanted to talk a little bit about the Fury Wilder fight. You want to say that for the weekend or do you want to talk about that now? It's up to you, brother. Because I, I, mean, I really want to get into this Usyk versus Joshua thing. We already started let's a little bit. Let's go into Usyk, Joshua. We'll talk about. Um, let's talk about the, the big we'll fight this Saturday. Yeah. As well. Uh, let's talk about this t this fight that's taking place in Tottenham, England, this weekend, where Eric's daughter is currently living right now, England, the UK. Yeah. Um, Alexander Usyk versus Anthony Joshua for what? Three of the four belts? Yes. For three of the four belts, right? Tyson Bill Fury still has the WBC. WBC. And, the WBC. and the lineal. And the lineal. Yeah. So this is for three of the four belts, or three of the five, whatever you want to call it. Uh... I saw a video of Usyk today at the open workout. I don't know if you saw it. He actually yeah. did bulk up a little bit. They say he looks like he's around 228, 230. So he did bulk up and maybe 10 pounds from his last fight. 
Looks strong. But is he soft or is he? No, he's no, not. He's, he's not he's soft. Solid. He's solid. He's oh. solid. Those Ukrainians ain't soft, dude. Well, They're, no, I know, I know. I, I mean, I'm gonna say it again. I had Eric watch a couple fights today. Um, I had him watch Usek's um semifinal victory over Marcus Breedis in the cruiserweight super six. Yeah, and then I also had him watch what was Usyk's sternest test and only a second uh, legitimate heavyweight fight against Derek Chisora. Both Chisora fights won were very fight. questionable in a lot of ways. I think um, Breedis is a, was a very underrated fighter. I think he tactically showed better skill at some moments than Usyk. His punch, not to say that he's a more talented fighter, his punch choices that he made, he was throwing this beautiful hook to the body that came right back up and was catching Usyk every single time. He hurt Usyk on a couple occasions. Um, yeah. Don't get me wrong. Usyk is an amazing fighter. and he's, he's an amazing personality. I love his goofy things that he does. He's great for the sport. I but, watched. So in, in that fight, I, I actually scored that fight 115-113 for Usyk. Yeah. Uh, not, 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 to, see that. Not, to, not to say that, that um, um, Breedis didn't have his moments because he did. I mean, the, the scorecards even showed it. The scorecards, one of them had 114-114 and the other two had it one. 15 113 like i scored it so it was majority then so it was it was just a majority decision but it was it was a close fight you know um, I would, and breedis absolutely had his moments in in that i fight. would love to see everybody talks about there's no opponents out there for better be there's one right there breedis and bam that guy make it happen dude i would love to see it dude breedis is what he's the german huh Dude, the, the guy's he's a really good fighter, bro. Very yeah. underrated, bro. I, I haven't really watched a lot of his fights, but just watch him. When you could look that good against a guy as talented as Alexander Usyk, you got yeah. something a little special. But yeah. getting back on what you were talking about, so did you got a chance to see his test against Chisora because his first fight against Tim Witherspoon was really a non-effort. Tim Witherspoon, Chaz. I'm sorry, Chaz Witherspoon, Tim Witherspoon's son, Chaz Witherspoon, hadn't fought in years, was at his heaviest weight, he really didn't bring anything to the table. It was just yeah. kind of like a sparring session for Usyk. I had I had Chisora winning uh, the first seven rounds, and then I believe it was like the ninth or the tenth round also that I had him winning. So he he as far you as thought I'm Chisora won, yeah. Oh, and there was yeah. a lot of people that thought that Chisora really got the short end of the stick on that thing. But I think I had Usyk winning the fight only based on his constant productivity. Yeah, Chisora has a chance has a tendency to lapse some rounds and he'll come on strong in the beginning then he dies out then he'll try to do something in. where Usyk That's was true. constantly peppering him with that jab and stuff so I definitely think it was a hard earned but a well deserved victory for Alexander Usyk but it also put a lot of question marks out there he was well, I, I, very I look at it his this way Ch Ch Chisora um, is slower than Joshua um, it doesn't hit like Joshua um, he's got pop though. Chisora's Chisora's got, Chisora's no, got, he's got pop. I Chisora's mean, and, and got he, a chin. Believe me, he hit. He hit uh, Alec. Uh, uh, um, uh, he, he hit. Um, God, what's the last name? Usek. Uh, Usek. Usek. I'm sorry. He hit Usek with some some haymakers, and so the guy actually has a pretty good chin. I, I mean, because he got hit with some some. Well, Usek was Usek was rocked a few times in that fight. Yeah, no, but he was rocked. Absolutely, he was rocked. Yeah. And so when I when I watched that fight, I saw. You know, Chisora continually moving forward. Yeah, Usek was 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 definitely busy, staying busy, staying busy. But he was getting clocked and clocked and clocked, and it was just like, you know, I don't care how many jabs you, unless the only thing that's landing in a fight is a jab. You know, the jabs aren't going to really be scoring tons. But when you're getting rocked and hit and bounced from one side of the ring to the other with a shot, those are scoring shots. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I really think that, um, Usyk got a gift with, with that so. particular room. Well, uh, well, fight. I mean, go ahead, go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. I'm talking too much. Go ahead. No, I, I, I thought Usyk edged it close, like seven rounds to five. I mean, a couple of those early rounds, I mean, even though Chisora was the guy that was the aggressor coming forward, I thought Usyk maybe landed the, maybe the little cleaner blows. Yeah, I have I an agree. entirely different take on, on this fight. I, a lot of people like are using Chisora. As, as the measuring stick of how Usyk's going to do against Joshua. But what I think, and I've seen Chisora fight many, many times, Chisora has something about him. He's got a lot of losses, right? What he's got, like seven, eight losses, right? He's fought yeah. everybody, he's right? fought everybody, yeah. What, what, what Chisora has, he's got two things that Anthony Joshua doesn't have. He's got a better chin than Joshua. Oh, absolutely. And he's got no fear. 
Yeah, he's, he's no got fear. no fear at all. So yeah. which when I say he's, when he has no fear, he had no problem coming forward. Now, Anthony Joshua, it might take him four or five rounds to figure out that I don't have any to fear this guy's punches because he is chinny. It's not yeah. just that he got knocked out by Andy Reese and got dropped, what, four times and lost the title. He's been hurt. He got hurt by Klitschko. He got, he got hurt by Dillian White. Um, other than that, I mean, I think he might have got caught once by um, AJ. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Joseph Parker caught him towards the end of the fight. The 11th, right? the 11th round he caught him. And you're him. like, where was that? So, yeah. so what I think is going to happen you're not going to see AJ fight in that same manner that Chisori is. He, which, which, what's that going to do? That's going to allow Usyk to Gain be confidence. to to be precise and to set punches up. I think Chisora didn't let Usyk breathe for yeah. those first, especially those first six rounds. He just was coming and coming and coming and coming. So that's what I think. That's what I really think is yeah, going to happen. Yeah. That, that's I, a good. That, that's a great take. That's a great with, take. With with Chisora in that in that fight, though, I mean, you could visibly see him by the I seventh have a round. I have a different take on it. No, but I by the seventh round, work. he was winded. I mean, and he yeah. was Chisora, losing his. Chisora's you know, always gets tired. Yeah, he He's gets tired. Ever. Yeah, and, and and so that's that's the only reason that I I think that Usek was then able to be a little more effective and actually do more because his conditioning was a lot better than Chisora's. But Anthony Joshua, I don't think has that problem. Well, I think no. Joshua, even though he looks like he's in great shape, he, he's had a tendency to, to get tired. He's gassed, yeah. I, I have a little bit different take on this. I don't think that I think Joshua has to necessarily have that constant pressure that Chisora does because he fights a different way. I think the biggest issue that Alexander Usyk is going to run into is Anthony Joshua's right hand. Go back and walk the Chisora fight. It's there to be hit, and it's a long looping, just like what Anthony Joshua throws. You know what I'm saying? That's there to be hit. So Usyk may have some success with his jab, but in order for him to really, really, really establish himself, he's going to have to put himself in that range, that zone that Anthony Joshua is so comfortable being in. And that's how he throws his jab. But the thing is, is that Joshua could throw punches and bunches, something that Chisora doesn't do. Chisora with the one punch and then, you know, wing of another big punch and stuff. So I'm going to just still stick to the situation that Alexander Usyk, isn't as elusive as we thought he was. He's there to be hit. Can he absorb the punching power of Anthony Joshua? Because he does have legitimate punching power. Does Anthony Joshua come out and be timid in the first rounds? Or does he do exactly what he did like in his last fight when he came out very aggressive? Um, I don't think he's, he's, he's thinking that there's anything that Usyk could do to hurt him, but he understands it's boxing and anything's possible, a la Andy Reese. Yeah, you're right. So you think AJ is going to be aggressive then? I don't say he's going to be aggressive. I think he's going to wait for Alexander to, to give him that opening. Make a mistake. Was, just like what happened against Klitschko. He waited, you know, Joshua didn't panic when he got knocked down. He waited, you know, he, he is a patient fighter. And as soon as Klitschko made that mistake, he unleashed that bomb. And, you know, all it is, I want to see what happens when Usyk is, takes that first really real right hand from, a, you know, from, from because the ones he was taking from Chisora, when Chisora finally figured out that he could catch Usyk with the right hand, he was already gassing and, and it wasn't really sitting into the punches. I want to see what happens when he gets in with a guy that's actually got the level of schooling that, you know, just a little bit better posturing that Joshua has. It's going to say a lot about where Usyk's at and what his chances are for the rest of the night. Well, what are you guys, you guys, you guys willing to make a prediction to right now on this? Yeah, fight? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, let, I, I'll, I'll go first. Go so, ahead. Um, w- Joshua is getting better a, a, as time goes on. He's learning from his mistakes um, I think he's getting better. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Yeah, he he, he, he really is. Um, and if the Joshua comes out and he actually is um, does not go on his back foot, you know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. If, if he is pursuing, um, I think it's a uh, um, it's a Joshua win um, by decision. You know what? That, that probably uh, one seventeen, one twelve, something like that. So you think Joshua is going to win by decision? Yeah. That's a pretty wide decision too. What is that like? Eight rounds to four yeah, yeah. or to seven four. rounds to five? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Nine rounds to three or eight rounds to four. Yeah. 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 But I, I, I see him winning handedly. Okay. But I, I, I see Usyk lasting, you know? I mean, and that's that's a credit to Usyk, quite honestly. I mean, he's because he's a smaller guy coming up. He's a and, smaller guy and he's, he's going up against somebody that's, that's, you know, bigger, taller, longer reach, the whole works. I, yeah, I, I I think for me, 
you got to take your hat off to Alexander Usyk. This is a challenge that he didn't need to do at this stage in his career. So dominant True. at the cruiserweight, and there's still a lot of other possibilities out there. He could have took some lighter fights with his with his credentials. He'd still make a great living doing it. But he right away, because I know if Usyk is successful in this challenge, he's going to put his focus on the other champion, which will be either Tyson Fury or Deontay Wilder. So you got to take your hats off to Usyk. He's one of those rarities in boxing and the thing that we love about boxing, the guys that are willing, that are, that are willing to, um, you know, to dare themselves to be great. If Alexander Usyk to be successful in this fight, he needs to make Joshua second guess himself. How he does that is making Joshua pay for throwing those big right hands for throwing that uppercut come in with precise punches to make Joshua stop doing that. I think Alexander Usyk would serve himself well to go to Joshua's body. Something Andy Reese did that actually exposed a little bit. And, and um, Carlos Descom did showing that Joshua doesn't really take a body shot, even though he's ripped, that doesn't mean he, that he can take a body shot. The biggest obstacle Alexander Usyk is going to have to get over is the fact he's got to convince himself that he's ready for this moment. Once Joshua hits him with that big right hand, which Joshua's going to do. Believe me, he's watched the video. Anybody that sees it, it's not hard. It's there. It's just, you know, I don't see Usyk dancing around. I don't see him running. He's not that kind of a fighter. People try to say that he is. He's, he's not that kind of fighter. Neither is Joshua. So at some point, these two monsters are going to meet in the middle. And that's when it's going to be decided. I'm going to lean with Joshua just based on the fact that he's fought in the bigger fighters. I'm not going to say the better fighters. Bigger fighters... And he suffered a loss. So he understands what it is to lose. So he knows what he has to look forward to if he doesn't do what he has to do. Alexander Usyk's never lost. He's perfect. So Alexander Usyk doesn't know what he has to do or how he has to keep up if he is on the short end of the stick. So I'm going to lead with Joshua, and I'm going to lead with a stoppage. I'm going to go with somewhere. It's going to be in the late rounds and stuff, but I think eventually the, 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 the power shots are going to break down. Usyk may have put on more weight, but that doesn't mean he's durable to those heavyweight punches. I agree. All righty. 36 turn. years ago today is actually was 36 years ago today, September 21st, 1985, Michael Spinks outpointed Larry Holmes. Larry Holmes. And I, I think Usyk outpoints, frustrates, tires, and wins the decision against Anthony Joshua. I'm calling the upset. I'm picking the upset. Yeah, something, it's, it's something possible, bro. I saw. Bro, something is telling it, me. Brother. Something is telling me that this guy, he's taking this fight for a reason. Like you said, he doesn't have to take this fight. They see something, man. I don't know what it is they see, but I think if they can get through the first three, four rounds, get this guy in the deep waters, and just outbox him, take his confidence away. That's something that Usyk is really good at. If he can go in there and take, that's what Andy Reese did. As soon as Andy Reese heard Joshua, his confidence was gone. Yeah. yeah. Take That's Anthony true. Joshua. Right. He, he's one of those fighters that when you take their confidence away, they just they dissolve in front of you. So, so I'm calling point. Usyk by 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 unanimous point. decision. I can, yeah, I can see that. Absolutely, I can see it. I would love to see it. I love that was All right. Man. So so I've got Joshua he's by like this, unanimous dude. decision. <laughs> We've got Usyk. I love what he Mike, does. I do. He he Mike's got Usyk. You just gotta put something black on your teeth. Oh. You got to put something black on your teeth so you can get the freaking the gap funny, in his dude. teeth. Dude, I wish I understood half the time what he says. It's like this because, dude, I know he says some funny shit, dude. You, you see know? where he's training? Did you watch the DAZN special on him where they're training? Yeah. Somewhere yeah. in Moscow. And it's like there's nothing but horses around. And he's li he's living in this house that's like, dude, it looks like it's like not, right out like a Hansel and Gretel novel. Well, every time I've ever seen <laughs> Usyk, one thing I like about Usyk, and, I, and we're going to move to this because we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, I like that Usyk is a very impressionable person, but I, but I see the fact that he's a very friendly person. You know, he gets along even with the opponents that he fought. I saw a thing afterwards. I talked about the post fight after he fought Breedis. He was so impressed with Breedis thing. They actually went out to dinner that night together and hung oh, out. Oh yeah. Stuff. You know, they're just those really? kind of people. Oh yeah. Well, you know, the, you know, the, a lot of those fighters, you know, the, the one anomaly and out of all those Eastern European fighters is triple G. He doesn't seem like a very affable, nice guy, no. really outside of boxing. I mean, really, he doesn't he, seem like the he, kind he of guy that to give that act. He always remind me of, of Eddie Haskell. Hello, Mr. Cleaver. Oh, Hello, yeah, Mr. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then behind parents him. walk away. It's like, oh, they're fucking dicks, you know? <laughs> hey, come on, beef, you know? No, he let you no, no, I, I agree. Right. Anyways, Usyk is he is a he's a great guy. I like to hang out with that. I like to go fishing with him and Lomachenko. You oh, think Lomachenko yeah. will be there this weekend? I don't see why not. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He'll be there, huh? Yeah, yeah. 
So, hey, uh, real quick, Mike, um, I don't know, um, before we move on to the next fight, did you hear the news about Tim Zhu? Yes, Tim right. Zhu, yes, against uh, Anoy. In a way. Yeah, in a way. The in a way. I don't know what Inoue has done since that fight. I think he might have had one fight since then. But um, he's, he's a, had a, he's had a, he's a very fights. durable, he's a very durable uh, uh, um, junior middleweight, man. I'm telling you. In a way, it's tough, yeah. I'm telling you, this is this is the fight right here that is going to be the true test for Zoo because he is so durable and he just keeps coming. Yeah. Tim yeah. Zhu's got to be ready for that. But I'm telling you this right now, if Tim Zhu beats in a way in impressive fashion, like devastating fashion, there is no, there is no more questions to be answered. He's ready for the top guys. Yep. That's yep. just how I feel because Jaime had a great camp for that fight. And, and, and Jaime was hitting on all centers in that fight. And that guy gave Jaime everything he could handle and but, just but, kept but coming. Jaime, well, Jaime was still suffering from the weight thing. I mean, I know it was tough for him still to get down to it. But the thing that impressed me, anyway, he's actually had five fights since the movie. If I just want to, Oh yeah. Stoppages. Yeah. Okay. But, um, his physical stature, you know, he, he's such a, a he's like, he, dude, he, look, he looks like a body, but we could, we were, dude, Renee was standing next to him. Renee's like, I can't believe this guy's a junior middleweight. He looked like a bodybuilder. Yeah. He was just freaking solid. I think Tim Zhu has to have a different tactic going in this fight. And you tell me if you agree with this real quick, Mike. Um, I think Tim Zhu has to understand. Ha has to, yeah, because he's not going to knock this guy out. He doesn't possess that kind of power. If Mugia couldn't do it, he's not going to do it. This you never know, though, because he's getting stronger. A, he's getting right, stronger now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that he's that kind of a puncher. He's got punching power, and he's still moving into his man strength. But a guy like – the thing that, that's weird about – anyway, go back and watch his fight against Mugia. He's not there to be hit. He's always kind of doing this thing as he comes in and stuff. So he's got to be prepared for a guy who's kind of like a Asian junior middleweight version – of um showtime porter you know that's just yeah. always on top of you and stuff you know he's not going to give him any room to breathe zoo's best thing that he could do is just use his lateral movement and stuff and catch this guy coming in that use their strength against them i say it time and time again you know use their strength against them yeah and and zoo and zoo does have one little flaw that i i really wish he would correct because his dad oh, did the same thing. thing he pulls straight back I a little bit that. too much yeah the only good thing about that is though in a way, is not a rangy fighter. He's, he's not very, catch, yeah. He's he's not going to be a guy that's going to catch you at the end of a punch, so he doesn't have to worry about that. He I just think, needs to crowd you, yeah. Yeah, I think Tim Zhu totally could stop this guy. You know what I'm saying? But you're absolutely right, bro. This is a fight that he's got to be. Don't overlook this guy. Don't even talk about him because this guy is a dark horse. He gave Mugia tons of fists. Mugia did what he had to do to get the fight won. Tim Zhu, this is a, but this is a huge test, and this is a good, good measuring stick from not Mugia, but to the rest of the, of the division who have yeah. avoided this guy in New say, Hey, I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But there was also talk about him fighting Sebastian Pandora. Tim Zoo. Yeah. Which I would hate to see. Cause I love both guys. I mean, I love, yeah, Tim I Zou like Pandora. Yeah. I like Pandora. And then, and then, and then, man. and then yeah, very dangerous. Cause especially just that height. What is he? Six foot five. Six, Tim, seven. Tim, yeah. Tim Zoo's about five, eight, five, nine. Tim Zoo's not a very tall uh, junior middleweight. Well, he's the same height as, uh, as anyway. Because remember, yeah. it was just a little shorter than Mugia. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. But that fight's taking place, what, in November, right? Yes. November, yeah. But well, uh, you know what? We got some great fights coming up. We've well, we got, got we got to finish this year strong, man. Yeah. And 2021. You know can, can we uh, talk about the Lopez and Cambosas fight? Yeah, that's probably the last one to talk about because there's really nothing else happening this weekend. And then next week, I think we could talk about the Fury card because that card is – the Wilder Fury card is going to be all, all heavyweights – on the pay-per-view and it's shaping up to be a good damn card. Yeah. Oh, I would, yeah. Uh, oh. Before we move into the, cause about the, um, Cambosis, you're, you're absolutely right, Mike. I was looking at the, the card. I actually got the card right here and, um, it's actually, it's, it's stacked. You got it's all heavyweights, Helenius in a, in a rematch against, um, Adam Kamlowski. You got Effie Ajaba going up against undefeated Frank Sanchez and both undefeated monster punchers. You got Vladimir Hernandez, um, going up against Julian Williams, who the, you know, you got Jared Anderson, the other undefeated guy, going up against uh, some Vladimir um, Triskin, twenty-two and zero from Russia. Yeah, it's a stacked card, man. It's all heavyweights on the on the thing. With the, yeah. with that's pay per view, Mike. Where where is that? One? Yeah, that'll be pay per view. That's going to be probably October I think 9th. a Fox pay per view or ESPN pay per view or something. Yeah. So so 
Uh, what's there to say about that Cambosis Lopez fight? But um, they're they're talking about moving it again another two weeks out. The entire thing's a shit show. The bottom line is this trailer organization is completely destroying boxing. Well, not boxing because, but they only they only have a small margin. But they're if 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 Teofimo Lopez thought he was going to get in there and make the quick easy money, this is derailing his career. Big well, time. I could say this real quick to sum it up on my end. If I'm George Cambosis Jr. at this point, I say, you know what, dude? I don't need this fight anymore. F because you. it's really starting to That's what they're trying to do. his career. Yeah. This longevity, this you can't continue to get yourself in this prime shape and then take a step back and re and reanalyze things. It's head games at TFMO. Does TFMO even want to fight anymore? Who cares? Let him take that title. He's eventually going to get stripped and then fight the guy for fight somebody else for the vacant title. I would just at this point say, you know what, guys, I'm done. TFMO, you're not worth it anymore. Man. I'll you see you in court. I would yeah. sue. The, I would sue top rank. I would sue it. Triller. I would sue everybody involved. The handling just, that TFMO took this supreme moment when he got that controversial decision over Vasily Lomachenko. No credit to TFMO Lopez. Discredit to Tiafimo, to Vasily Lomachenko for taking six rounds to wake up and figure out yeah. why am I even still in this fight with this guy? This guy should have already been asleep and I should have been back eating some freaking, you know, pizza Keto. back at, you know, with my dad. The thing is, is that, you know, Tiafimo Lopez has done nothing with this golden opportunity. It's kind of like a, a band winning, you know, some big major award and then you never hear from them again. And the next, you know, they show up playing over at freaking uh, Shamrocks or something. He's taking the golden <laughs> opportunity threw it right out the window. You know what I'm saying? For whatever reason, you know, there's problems. The guy's a head case. He, so he, I, he wasn't ready for the first fight, so they feigned COVID as an excuse. Right, bro. You called it, Mike. You and, called and, it too. And now, and, that, and, now they're, and now they're just delaying and delaying and delaying to try to just basically get Cambosis to just wipe his hands because they know he's not going to go anywhere. But if they can continue to push him, push him, push him to where he says, guys, I'm done. I'm not fighting this fight anymore. That's exactly what they want. Well, they they never want They want to take his will to win, bro. They want to get the Cambosis. They don't want this angry Cambosis. They want the Cambosis. It's like, we're going to do this fight already. You know? Yeah. Just yeah. kind of like whatever, you know, the, 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 the lethargic Cambosis. Cambosis, I'll be honest with you. I'm not, I wasn't impressed with a lot of things he did. You know, his tactics he did against Lee Shelby and others, but I'm going to chase him right now. I'm going to go back to like, you know, when you pissed off a man enough, this man is beyond, he is sitting on, he is an Aussie fire, dude. Believe me. Yep. Yeah. And he is just wants to destroy Tiafimo, you know? Yeah. That's I why Tiafimo is doing what he's doing. I've been telling he, everybody if the fight happens, put money on, on Cambosis. It's easy money. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. maybe. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I call that fight. I, I call that fight in under 10 Cambosis. Puts him puts Tiafimo out under ten. I tell you, Tiafimo's chinny, dude. He's very chinny. He gets I'm hit on the you, chin. He goes rounds. down. I love that nobody talks about the fact that Tiafimo got dropped in his pro debut. I love that they always show the the, the, the shot when Tiafimo knocks his guy out in the in the in the his pro debut, but they never show when the guy dropped Tiafimo Lopez. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. what got me so angry. And I see, I'm gonna get angry again when I think about Lomachenko. Not that Lomachenko is a Mike Tyson esque or a Casa Zoo type of puncher. But, but he had, possessed had Lomachenko actually showed up to fight Tiafimo Lopez. Yeah. yeah. Had Lomachenko actually showed up to fight from, from yeah, the, Lomachenko the first that round? Annihilated Nakatani. That's would have been over. That's the that's the that's the uh, Lomachenko I thought I was gonna see. You know, instead I got the Devin Alexander version. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey guys, um uh it's 10 after seven right now. Um we're just we're, we're we're approaching an hour. Um, is there anything else you guys wanted to fi finish up on before we cut out? Well, well, just real quick. Um, briefly on the Tyson Fury down to what I know we're gonna we're gonna talk about it in more depth. Um, yeah, on Sunday, but I'm I'm gonna continue with the same tune. I'm still perplexed by Deontay Wilder and his mental state. I I think at some point it's kind of like what happened to Evander Holyfield in that trilogy thing, which is a disgrace. I put a 58 year old man in there who could barely walk, much less box anymore. You know, or, 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 you know, he was kind of like a, the Joe Biden of boxing. He couldn't even say a straight sentence. But, but, the, poor, but the point is, um, Deontay Wilder, I don't care what kind of physical things that they're doing with him. I don't care what kind of technical boxing uh, exercises or, or what they're trying to, how they're trying to build it. They didn't start here. And that yeah. was making him realize that, listen, Deontay, you're you not lost. perfect. You lost the fight. Let's learn from you that. You hit the man with your right hand. He got up. 
a la, you know, the Terminator, you know, I'll be back. The bottom line is, let's move from that. Let's fix the mistakes. Malik Scott's done nothing for Deontay Wilder. Because if all you're going to do is be a cheerleader, Deontay That's all Wilder, he is. He's a Deontay cheerleader. Wilder is walking into a natural disaster. Not that I think that Tyson Fury is all that great, but Tyson Fury understands this man's broken already mentally. So as soon as I hit him, he's going to revert right back to that broken Deontay from over there. And it's going to be a la Deontay Wilder. Might actually be the end of his career. I'll look at it that way. Might be the end of his career. I don't think Deontay Wilder has a chance in hell unless he can land. But he's so amped up. He wants to just get in there. He doesn't realize he's got to set on his punches and do it right. He's, he's so impatient. He thinks, you know, whatever I hit, I destroy. You're not fucking Drago, dude. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree. I think, like you said, it's it, the, the first thing he should have did was just accept that he got beat. Stop talking about the weighted suit, the tampering of the gloves, the water, Mark Breland. Uh, he even blamed one of the Durrell brothers was, was a spy and gave him something. The bottom line is he just needs to accept and move forward until you're willing to accept your shortcomings. You'll never move forward. You're just, he's, he's, he's just going to have a built-in excuse for the next fight. That's all he's going to do. You remember Johnny was talking to someone telling me he was talking about when he lost to Antonio DeMarco. Yeah. And it was a stunning loss because Johnny was in a sense, you know, the guy coming in the undefeated guy and uh, something, it was something great that Johnny, I remember he said, I'm talking about John, the gladiator Molina recently retired. Um, he said the first thing he did was get back into the gym and realize I took a loss. I'm going to use it to my advantage. I'm going to learn from my mistakes. That was it. He moved on, and then he took even a bigger risk and went forward. Didn't make any excuses. Didn't make any excuses, man. That's what fighters do, man. Look back in the old days. All the greats, they all lost fights, man. Sometimes at the beginning of their career, sometimes at the end of their career. Yeah, you're right. Deontay Wilder mentally hasn't, hasn't, aged, hasn't aged appropriately. Yeah. He hasn't matured. Hey, real quick, though. Okay. Real quick, though. Uh, this is being recorded for... Um, my uh, daughter, who's in uh, the United Kingdom right now. Um, you guys want to say anything to Sherry? Baby Sherry, we love you. Hey, uh, what time is it there right now? It was, it, I don't know. It, it, it's like three in the morning asleep. there. She's yeah, asleep. she's probably asleep three in the morning. Yeah, yeah. If she's been able to adjust to the time, hey, man, go jump jump on the tube and go to Trafalgar Square. Or go to freaking Piccadilly. Like, you Circus. know those little weird things to say? What are some of those weird little, like, little sayings that they say in the U.K.? Uh, I don't know about the sayings, but there's just so many places to go there. You can get anywhere. You don't just get it. There's a train. There's a tube station everywhere. Jump oh, on yeah. the tube and go to, I don't know, the best place, honestly, uh, the best place I've ever been there. And I've been all over the UK was, um, it's called, uh, what's it called again? I stayed there for like four days. It's near Piccadilly Circus. It's not too far from like Chinatown and stuff. Mm -hmm. Covent Gardens. It's called uh. Covent Gardens. Dude, it's amazing. Restaurants, theaters, live theaters. They have yeah. their own, they have their own, uh, you know. Um, well, oh, I'm, man, I'm, there's just so many. They have I casinos. Little... They have casinos there. Uh, I'll be there in December. Shopping. To, to me and uh, Baby Allie will be there in December. Um, and we're going to spend a couple of weeks there with with her. Um, and then oh, Allie dude. and Sherry. I might go with you, dude. When I was at, hey, Allie when I was and at... Sherry are going to be out there by themselves for two two weeks. Um, as well so Damn. um it's gonna be kind of crazy but it's 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 fun hey baby hey baby girl dad love loves you, you. And love you. Just, remember, just, hey, just remember what your uncle already did when i was in london for only one day because i had a layover over there i walked down the street smoked a cigarette drank a beer and sang morrissey the entire night <laughs> all right <laughs> yeah. all right guys all right it's about well it's we're, we're 15 minutes past the hour yeah, yeah. we're gonna go ahead and shut it down hey thanks for tuning in everybody don't forget to like subscribe we're gonna be back on sunday to talk about the big fight on saturday once again don't forget to tune in it's on the zone alexander usik challenging anthony joshua for three of the four belts at heavyweight it's a fight that's you know let's just hope we get a great fight at the end of the day no matter who wins or loses let's who let's hope we get a good fight two gold medalists man when do you ever see that yeah, exactly. Two gold medalists in different divisions. Yep. So for everybody at Enter the Ring Live, I'm your host, Mighty Mike. I'm AJ Rage. And I'm Eric the Red. We'll see hey, everybody. Baby.